Great Britain only has one European boxing champion, Chris Finnegan, at light heavyweight. Now tonight, Evan Armstrong from Scotland tries to make it two against this extraordinary man, formerly from Cuba, now living in Spain, Jose Legra, who'll be 29 next month, a refugee from Castro's Cuba, who's lived in Spain for nine years, who beat Howard Winston for the World Featherweight Championship, has never lost a European title fight, and in fact has lost only four fights in the nine years that he's been boxing in Europe. Jose Legra, formerly of Cuba. And fighting him tonight, on the day of his 29th birthday, Evan Armstrong from Air, the British featherweight champion, who has never fought before for the European title. These two meeting for the second time. They met in a non-title fight in Barcelona just about two years ago. And Armstrong claims that although he did all the attacking, going forward all the time against Le Gras, the decision went against him, and he thought it was unfair. Well, Le Gras has been well described as the mini Muhammad Ali. And facially, certainly, there are resemblances. And in moves and style and in flashiness, then certainly Le Gras has got very much of Muhammad Ali about him. Good to watch. Quick silver feet, quick hands, but a little inclined at times to punch with the inside of the glove. Armstrong starts very much the underdog here. The betting going about four to one against him. And clearly the onus is on Armstrong to force the pace all the way. Keep the pressure on Legras. Try to wear him down. And try to take the spring out of those dancing legs. looking lithe and supple. And Armstrong, a very angular Scot, who looks frail, but certainly isn't. Well, it's Armstrong's big chance tonight on his 29th birthday. But has he got the ability, and has he got the stamina, to keep going forward for 15 rounds and wear the other man down? in the first round, and that's where he wants it. He doesn't want uh, Armstrong near him. This blonde Scott from here won the British featherweight title last July when he knocked out Jimmy Revy in 12 rounds, which is a useful form line when you consider that when Legras met Jimmy Revy, he couldn't stop him. He had to settle for a points win. You really do have to work hard against Legras because he's never in one spot for more than half a second at a time. Look how much of the ring he uses. And you never quite know where the next punch is coming from. The side-to-side -side movements, as well as the forward and backward movements, confusing to a, an opponent because you don't meet many men like this. Speed, footwork, quick hands are the vital factors in Legras' style, just as they are in Muhammad Ali's style.
And Legras' left hand seldom out of Armstrong's face. And Armstrong looking for him all the time, but he can't find him. You've got to be really fit to pursue this sort of style and one can bet that Legra is fit tonight because in fact he was expecting uh, to fight for the WBA featherweight championship and he's been training very hard for a world title fight which didn't come off and so he's put in about two months of hard work and now he's bringing it all out against Armstrong. Seconds out, now three. genuflection in the corner from Legra before he comes out for each row. The man who's known in Spain as the Black Marvel, and they're not far wrong. Legra, the man who wrote finis to the boxing career of the brilliant Howard Winston. face beginning to look very marked. The bra immaculately turned out. Cambridge blue shorts and gleaming white boots with his initials on the tongue of each boot. the impression that Legra at this stage really enjoying himself here producing all his skills all the style that's made him famous and all of it at the moment paying off well Armstrong I suppose what you call an artisan boxer not stylish, but dour and rugged. A man who still works as a builder's labourer in Tar Bolton, near Prestwick, where he lives. A man who earns less than £1,500 a year as a labourer, but who tonight is picking up £1,440 as his share of this European title purse. be looking again to cross that right hand over the top. some time to feel his way into this his first European title fight wanting to look good it's only his second fight since he won the British featherweight championship but now you sense that the Scot is gaining in confidence and he really has got to put the Gras under pressure because there are signs that uh, the Gras might be going over the top a little bit
quite a sign of strain on Legras' face now. He's under stress. And he knows he's got a dangerous man in front of him now. making him work and move. That's a good round for Armstrong. And I'd make that the first one of these one. Legras certainly knows now that he's in a fight. Seconds out. Round six. So now we've got signs that this fight is beginning to turn a little away from Legra and towards Armstrong. Stay still. If Armstrong can keep it up, that's the way Legras going to have to move for 15 rounds. Acknowledges it. Well, this is the Quicksilver Legra. This is the style for which he's famous. He hasn't done a lot of work with his hands, but he's done a lot of work with his feet brought out the odd right hand, which has caught Armstrong. And the Scots had a pretty frustrating round. He's chased him all the way, but has never at any time landed a really solid punch on him. In fact, he's hardly landed a punch on him at all. Armstrong stepped it up there, and as he stepped it up, so Legra got faster on his feet. So Evan was chasing to no effect. Seconds out, round seven. When Legra arrived in this country last week, he forecast defeat for Armstrong between the sixth and the eighth rounds. Well, here we are in the seventh, and either Legra has got to come up with something, or he's got to eat those words. side of the left eye. And we've reached the first real crisis of this fight. Armstrong cut at the side of the left eye, and Legrand now looking for the chance to finish it.
And so the first real sign of damage on either man is on the face of the challenger, Evan Armstrong, at the side of his left eye. Not a serious cut yet, but in an awkward place. Seconds out, round nine. is really quite astounding when you think that only four men have beaten him in 107 fights. Those men are Howard Winston, who outpointed uh, Legras way back in 1965 in a non-title fight. Johnny Famichon, who took the world title away from Legras in this very ring, in fact, on points. Vicente Saldivar, the great Mexican world champion, outpointed Legras over 10 rounds in 1969. And last year, Taha Ben Hassan of Algeria stopped Legras in four rounds, the only time this man has been stopped since he left Cuba. The reason that Legras can keep this sort of uh, fancy footwork up is that although Armstrong's chasing him all the time, he's not really putting him under severe pressure. That's the sort of stuff that he's got to do if he wants to draw the strength out of this man. But so far, those occasions have been few and far between. But that's what Armstrong's got to do if he wants to slow the man down. You could really count on the fingers of one hand the number of really good punches that Armstrong's landed so far. for Armstrong, certainly the best he's had since the fifth. Still having to eat left hands as he comes forward. Well, we're coming up towards the tenth and time beginning to run out for Armstrong although there's no telling whether Legras might begin to fade a bit towards the end and if he does then that will be Armstrong's opportunity Second out, round ten. so successful with in an earlier round that long overarm right hand which goes over the top of the guard and catches Legrand to the head. Armstrong needs a lot more of those. Beautiful right uppercut there from Legrand. Punch you don't often see. The boxers of our time and very much underrated I would have thought around the world the thing that stops him from being great 
is his lack of a really decisive punch. If he had that, he'd be well nigh unbeatable. still feel, even at this stage, and with Armstrong well behind, that the Scot could yet pull something out, because he's still strong. And he worried Legras there. You always know it when they begin to come back a bit wildly like that. That's, again, the little bit of kidding to try to show the other man that you're not really hurt. And as soon as they do that, you know very well that they are. Well, that was a round that was packed with action. And both men had their moments there. There was one beautiful right uppercut, which we can see again that Legras delivered, which was a punch you don't see very often in the ring. Here it comes. Look at that. That's the perfect right uppercut. And it's the absolute answer to a man who's crouching. Seconds out. Round 11. So now this European Championship battle for the featherweight title, the nine stone title, really entering what must be the decisive phase now. Armstrong behind, but still strong, and every chance of catching his man. The damage near the left eye of Armstrong has never worried him, and in fact, I don't think it's really bled at all since it was first injured. for Legras and fancying his chance by the look of it. Whatever strength Armstrong has saved for the close of this fight, we're getting to the stage now when he's going to use it. falling short. Crack of heads there between them. The grass hardly done a thing in this round, except move. times. Good round for Armstrong. He's made all the running here. Really kept the pressure on, and Legras done very little. Oh, there's a nasty cut at the side of Armstrong's right eye. It happened in the closing seconds of that round, and that looks to me a far worse cut than he had on the other side of his face. Right by the side, almost really in the diametrically opposing uh, position. 
the side of the right eye now and looking rather worse than the first cut which the corner have very successfully closed seconds out round 12 and so Armstrong now comes out with cuts on both sides of his face from now to the end it's going to be a real battle with Armstrong rather badly cut down the side of his right face or the right hand side of his face and really now has got to go all out to try to stop this man if he wants to win the European title and the right eye of Armstrong not looking at all good Tomza, the German referee, looking very closely at Armstrong's face. And the grass head now, never out of the Scots face. Keep it up, says Tomza. And the grass now trying to rough his man up inside. and spring has certainly left the legs of Legras. Still jigging, but occasionally comes down on his heels. Now he's back on them now, look. begin to feel now that if Armstrong could really bring up a good right hand from somewhere he could do a lot of damage at this stage because I don't think the grass is really capable now of taking a good hard punch he's beginning to tire so Armstrong goes back for further repairs and he needs them rather urgently it might be touch and go in this fight now whether Armstrong can get through it with that injury and he certainly got roughed up by Legras in that last round. Second out, round 13. And Legras steals a look at Armstrong's face before he comes out for this one. The thought must be running through Legras' mind. How bad is the injury and how strong is this Scott? And how much have I still to fear? of Legrand now, it seemed to me to be designed towards trying to convince Armstrong he's still got plenty left and I don't think he's got that much left the question really is how much has Armstrong got left and is there enough in there for him to produce a really good punch And he's only got two more rounds in which to produce it.
most of the work done by the Cuban there, and Armstrong now open-mouthed, cut around both eyes, and looking as though he himself really feeling it now. And an awful lot of this will be the sheer frustration of having chased this man now for 13 rounds, and only a handful of times having managed to land a really good, hurtful punch on it. Second shot. Last three minutes, and these two are really going to know about it. It's been a fast fight all the way. of Armstrong. The Cuban saved a bit for the finish. Putting the finishing touches now. just trying to catch the judge's eyes with a final flourish in case there are any doubts but there really can't be and Evan will have to knock him out for win Listen to this crowd at the Albert Hall to realise that. It's a good champion's way to finish a fight. And it hasn't been, after all, a happy 29th birthday for Evan Armstrong, who is not going to be the European featherweight champion. Well, it was a fine fight. No knockdowns. 15 fast rounds full of action. A great effort by Armstrong. We have to wait for the referee and two judges' decisions. But there really can't be very much doubt about it. Well, now we've got one of these scenes which you seem to get so often in boxing while they collect the judges' scores. No official announcement yet. Nobody yet knows except the judges and the referee who's won. But here comes the decision. Legras. Legras is the winner, and there really couldn't have been very much doubt about that. So Jose Legras, the Cuban who now lives in Spain, his fifth European title fight, he's won all of them, but you've got to hand it to Evan Armstrong from Scotland for a really brave challenge. He kept it going all the way, but he couldn't match the other man's speed or skill.